all you need to do is look at, uh, turn on your nightly newscasts. I mean, go to, here's Google News today. Google News, an arm of the mainstream media, of course. Uh, Biden administration, look at all the, I mean, this is the top headlines on Google News. Biden administration tries to mobilize international diplomatic effort to halt the Taliban. Politico, Biden on Afghanistan, not my problem. BBC News, Afghan capital may fall within weeks as Taliban fighters advance across the country. Opinion in the Washington Post, the Biden administration's response to the Taliban offensive is delusional. CNN, fear and resentment reign in Afghanistan as the Taliban overruns more cities. The mainstream media loves war. The mainstream media is fueled by billionaires who make tons of money off of war. They make money when we are at war. They are a part of the military industrial complex and have been for decades, right? So when the mainstream media spends their nightly newscasts talking about war and why we need to be scared of this particular country or that and makes their money off of war, like CNN, by the way, CNN is built off of war. You should be questioning that. I love this article, though, today from Politico. Biden on Afghanistan, not my problem. First of all, uh, he didn't say it's not his problem, but if he did, I would agree with him. The president is unwilling to rethink his decision to withdraw U.S. troops, even as Afghanistan unravels faster than expected. And by the way, President Trump ran on ending the war in Afghanistan as a complete disaster. And he, he slammed Jeb Bush, said, your brother got us into these, these phony wars in Afghanistan and in Afghanistan. It's time to bring these people home. And he got rousing applause. Did he? No, he didn't. Did he expand the war there? No, he didn't. But he didn't bring them home. So now President Biden, who, who is by all accounts a warmonger, right? He has, he has supported uh, airstrike after airstrike after airstrike under the Obama administration. He ends the war in Afghanistan somewhat, ramps up airstrikes. And so now the mainstream media doesn't know how to handle it. Like, you know, they're kind of like, well, wait a second, he's our guy. Like CNN's like, he's our guy. But man, what's going on in Afghanistan is... You know, we get we need to make our money off of war again. We need to make sure that with this this in military industrial complex keeps churning and burning and churning here. What do we do? Let's call them delusional. Biden on Afghanistan, not my problem, says Politico. As the Taliban as the Taliban blitz across Afghanistan, U.S. officials scrambled to assess just how quickly the government in Kabul could fall. President Joe Biden is recalibrating his message to Americans, where he once insisted that two, two yeah twenty years of U.S. backing had left Afghan forces capable of defending themselves. Biden and his aides have shifted to a more cold-blooded mantra: "If they can't, that's not our problem." Inside the administration, top aides are just trying to keep up with the rapidly changing battlefield. U.S. officials now believe Kabul could be surrounded or fall under Taliban control within weeks. And even the future of the fortress-like U.S. embassy is increasingly in doubt. Hmm. Biden said yesterday, I don't regret my decision. Afghan leaders have come together. They've got to fight for themselves, fight for their nation. Okay. But not everyone's on board with this. <laughs> I mean, you absolutely have members of the military. You have the military industrial complex. And by extension, you have the, the U.S. news media pushing for extended war in Afghanistan once again. A return, a surge. All you need to do is turn on MSNBC or CNN or any of the channels and see generals. Like today, we've got General this guy, and he's going to be joining us after the break as this general who served in Iraq. What do you think about the president's decision to remove, uh, leave Afghanistan? I think it's crazy. Well, why do you think it's crazy? Because the military industrial complex needs to make money off of this. So I'm sorry, we were there for 20 years. You told us about the trillions of dollars that we needed to spend in Afghanistan, the, th the countless American lives lost, the countless innocent lives Afghans lost, women and children bombed, killed. 20 years 
we've been funneling money and weapons and arms and training to propping up the Afghan government, okay? Giving them all of the weapons and training for 20 years. And we leave, and a week later, Kabul is surrounded? What more can we do? Like, how much more blood, sweat, and tears and time do we need to spend propping up a government on our own, like, because we think that that's what we should be doing around the world? I mean, I, I, I'm at a loss for, I'm at a loss for words on this. I mean, the answer from the mainstream media and these members of the military is to, to, to surge back in there to help the Afghans within one week after 20 years of training and weapons training. And, and you have access to our tanks and our Humvees and our, and guns and missiles and, and bases and everything else that we've given. And in one week, and we've done some pretty terrible training, I guess. But, well, I mean, also not to mention the fact that what the the Taliban now, if if I'm if I'm wrong on my history on this, I know you were like more of a history person, but uh, wasn't the Taliban once the Mujahideen, and didn't we actually train and arm them? Yes. <laughs> so yes, not our problem. Not our problem. But the people you're fighting, we also trained. Good luck. <laughs> oh, that's exactly the case. You know, and and I, I, you know. You know, U.S. officials telling the press that Kabul will fall to the Taliban within 90 days, um, and perhaps within the month. You know, it's amazing. One official who, who like others, spoke on the condition of anonymity due to the issue's sensitivity said, said to say that the U.S. military now assesses a collapse could occur within 90 days. Others said it could happen within a month. Some officials said that although they were not authorized to discuss the assessment, they see the situation in Afghanistan as more dire than it was in June, when intelligence officials assessed a fall could come as soon as six months after the U.S. leaves. Meanwhile, the U.S. is still raining down explosives. I mean, we're murdering Afghan civilians on a daily basis with airstrikes. So we're, event we're just slowing down the eventual Taliban takeover of Kabul. Long enough for the Biden administration to have its, like, you know, ridiculous sort of 9-11 victory party, essentially. Biden has said that the U.S. will continue providing air support, which is imperialism for uh, bombing campaigns. We'll, we'll provide air support <laughs> to the Afghan government for however long the government exists. Taliban fighters have already taken more than a quarter of Afghanistan's provincial capitals in less than a week. And Kabul could fall within a month. I mean, as Caitlin Collin, uh, Johnson says, you know, this is an unforgivable outrage that cries out to the heavens for vengeance, not the Taliban takeover. That was always the inevit inevitable result of letting Afghanistan be controlled by Afghans. I'm talking about the invasion and the 20 year occupation of that nation by U.S. and its allies. It's only by the most aggressive narrative management and journalistic malpractice that the people around the world are not calling for the heads of the architects of this occupation. For 20 years, the world has systemically lied to, to that the U.S. coalition was building a government and military that could stand on its own. And that this goal was right around the corner and just needs a little bit more time. Right? We just needed 20 years. These guys are ready. These guys are ready to stand on their own. We've given them billions and billions of dollars of your money, by the way. And we've got lead pipes in Michigan that are killing people. Right? We can't pay for broadband access for up to 12 million kids to go to school during a pandemic. But we've absolutely paid billions of dollars so they could stand up on their own in Afghanistan. And within a few weeks, their whole everything has collapsed. Now it's crunch time, and we learned that they've been building in Afghanistan this entire time. What, what they've been building there was an entire fake movie set made of cardboard. The cost of that fake movie set, more than $2 trillion we've spent in Afghanistan. Just wrap your heads around that for a second. Want to see why I get so freaking hangry about that? $2 trillion. What could $2 trillion have done in the United States? Can you imagine? And you have senators and uh, bitching and whining about spending $1 trillion on our nation's infrastructure. Literally, 
You have Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and Donald Trump threatening to primary these people because they wanted to spend $1 trillion on infrastructure in the United States, on roads and bridges and schools. And Ted Cruz says, this is an outrage. This is socialism. Oh, what about the $2 trillion you just spent create, trying to create a country in Afghanistan that you supported? And you know the military budget's not going to go down if we're not in, in Afghanistan. So it's not like that money is ever going to come back. They could, mm -mm. they could take that so that they're like, okay, we're no longer at war. If we had no wars going on, our military budget would not decrease. So we still like look at this as like, no, we can't, we can't do anything about the homelessness situation in the United States. It's like houselessness just is, is escalating. Like healthcare is escalating, education, all of these, this stuff is, is adding up. They could fix it. And said they're they're just like no we have to we have to keep this military up at this level. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know they never it, it's like the movie Falling Down with with Michael Douglas, right? Great, great movie. And he admits like when he goes to the, he finds that uh, that that highway project, right? And they're not even working on that highway project. And he's like, this thing has been closed for months. They're not even doing any work on this thing. Like, what are they doing? And he brings a missile launcher, right? And he shoots it and blows it up or whatever. But the guy admits that they, they're literally not doing any work on it. They're only doing it just so they can keep make sure that their budget gets used so they may get more money next year. It's the same yeah. thing. Sean Dowling says, are you being hyperbolic or did they actually build a movie set? No, I'm being, well, no, that's, it's, I, I'm, I'm using that as a metaphor. All I'm saying is the whole thing was a fake, it was a phony movie set the whole time. Like you've been telling us for 20 years under Obama, under George W. Bush, under Trump, that we're, we're making sure these guys can support themselves. Democracy. Democracy. And we're giving them all of the guns. We've spent $2 trillion in Afghanistan. And within a few weeks of us leaving, the, 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 the Taliban is taking over. And what are we doing? Air support. Bombing schools. 20 civilians killed in Helmand province, health clinic, school destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, this is what we're doing to support them. Okay. So this is how we help. Yeah, this is what we're doing. B-52 bomber strikes, blowing these people up, killing, ki killing children and, and blowing up schools. But you won't see this covered in America. No, what you'll see is, hey, Taliban is surrounding the Capitol, and we need to get back out there. We need to get back out there, President Biden. You're delusional for leaving. Get out there and help these people. Help these people. You know, it's it's another thing, like because kind of kind of tying back to the to the 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 corporate uh, vaccine mandates and how they, you know, like it just favors the executives. You know, like what is what is an actual soldier? make per year i mean is it isn't it, it's i mean it's something like thirty thousand a year right i mean mm -hmm. somebody correct me if i'm wrong but like so all of those trillions we spent it didn't really go to the people that were actually there fighting it's going to like executives at these at these companies that are building bombs that are building tanks you know it's like it's like the same people making money off of that and again you have the like you know like in their view like the peons they're not making any of that right so no, you know, because like, that's I, the, I would, only, the argument. They always say, well, I always support the troops. You know, that's what they always say. So you'll have these senators that are like, yeah, I supported increasing the defense budget because I want to support our troops. You're not supporting the troops. If you supported the troops, they'd be making a great freaking salary and they wouldn't be in a war zone anymore. <laughs> like, I mean, if that's really what we're talking about here, then that's you're not supporting the troops. You're supporting the military industrial complex and you're making millions and billions. You're making them billions of dollars. That's what's happening. That's what's that's what you're supporting. And look at the Veterans Affairs. Clinton, you know, you talk about all the problems at the veterans, the, the VA and people can't get help. So, I mean, give me a break. Then you have a lot of veterans that say, I do get great care at the VA. That's great. Finally, after many years of like them getting crapped on at the VA, like, but this is the kind of stuff that, you know, this is what we're dealing with now. Let me know in the chat what you think about this. So don't, again, just don't fall for this. When you're watching the mainstream media and you're seeing all the coverage of the Taliban and you're telling it, you know, President Biden, you got to get back out there. We need to support a surge in Afghanistan. We need to get back out there. We need to, you know, we need to ramp up airstrikes. We need to 
you know, we need a special new aircraft that are just going to be high above the ground. We're getting our soldiers out of there, but we're going to put more soldiers on just bombing, bombing and keeping the Taliban out with these surgical airstrikes. Great. And how many innocent people get killed when they do this crap? Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.